Hello, friends. My name is Kyle. Real Revelations Everywhere. This video is going to be a follow-up to the first decision-making video, but this one is going to be geared towards decision-making in a competitive environment. And that starts with pattern recognition and a whole lot of finesse in uh, understanding what the opponent has shown you and what you have shown the opponent and how that is understood in the arena that you have placed yourself in. And there's a lot of variables that go into that. It starts with what game are you even playing in the first place? Is it a game? Might not be. And the decisions that you have made going into it has to do with, you know, your play style, what you have chosen to bring into the arena with you, whatever that looks like. And just in general, a large part of it is, you know, are you on a team or is this an individual game? And let's start first things first. I know I've said it in other videos before, but it is absolutely worth saying again. You got to keep an open mind to make effective decisions as often as possible. And that is in terms of the information that you are gathering yourself to do with the opponent, to do with your own team, to do with the game itself, and to do with what other people are telling you. You might not have the most respect for all of your teammates and coaches all the time. That happens. I know I haven't, even though you should. But it is only ever on you to evaluate all of the information that you come across. You have to critically think for yourself. And you might not have a ton of respect for everyone all the time. It happens. But if someone says something that is just beyond clever, someone says something that is just information of vital importance, if someone says something worth hearing and you didn't hear it, and you weren't listening, and you weren't paying attention just because you don't have respect for the source of the information, that is 1,000% on you. I don't care if you think that they are the biggest fucking dingus of all time. If they say something really smart, and you weren't fucking paying attention, that's your fault. That is you being an even bigger dingus than the biggest dingus of all time according to you and whatever your actual words for them are. I don't care. If it's worse than that, then guess what? It's even worse for you because you fucked up badly. You critically evaluate and think for yourself. I don't care what Dingus A or Dingus B has to say. If they're, oh shit, I just heard them say that they're moving into this formation. Okay, well, are they? Is that something worth thinking about? Is something really bad going to happen when they move into that formation? Is it going to completely counter what you all have been doing? Do you all have a counter for that? Have you evaluated what Dingus B had to say? Because if he tells you, hey, they're moving into that formation, and then you all lose the entire, all of it, because you had nothing to do about that formation that he told you about, guess what? Who's the biggest fucking dingus? Because Dingus B evaluated the situation and he figured out, hey, shit, we got to fix this. This is something that's coming at us. You did nothing about that. 
Well, all right, all okay, dingus C. Good for you. Now you're fucking a bigger loser than he is, because at least he tried to do something about it. So you don't get to just pick and choose what is and is not valuable information. You have to figure out what information is valuable. It's not the other way around. You don't determine what is or is not. You have to recognize what it is for what it is. And then, then, then you move forward with not a rigid, strict game plan, inflexible or otherwise. You adapt to what the opponent is doing. You allow the game to come to you. That's what quality decision making looks like. You take in all the information, you evaluate it as fast as you can, you find out what it is for what it is, and then you do what you have to do about it. It doesn't matter who you're playing against, it doesn't matter who you're playing with, the mindset doesn't change. If someone else needs to know something to affect their decision making, you better make that decision quickly to let them know because they need to know as soon as possible. You need to maybe not tell them yet and just see what happens. See if it's actually the case. Don't just go giving them misinformation the moment you get to as well just because you want to tell them everything that you think that you know. The critical evaluation is constantly going. But you have to keep an open mind to what is possible to even recognize what is actually occurring. So we keep an open mind and we have respect for everyone allowing us, ourselves, to take in the most information possible. See how helping other people all the time is going to make us better because we're worried about the big picture along with what's going on with ourselves. We're not worried. We are concerned with what the opponent is possibly going to bring our way that we are even aware of and we are constantly vigilant in making sure that everyone knows what they need to know the moment i know what they need to know i need to let them know along with i hope that they're going to tell me as soon as they know but knowing is I'll say probably more than half the battle. It's most the battle. But you still got to go out there and you still got to make the shots and you still got to make the throws. You still got to take the licks. You still got to go play the game. But knowing better is not just a state of mind, but it's the understanding that Truly knowing better is knowing that you don't actually know until it's been proven to you and you see the patterns over time and you build up your repertoire of potentially knowing and understanding the situation, but you're always open to new concepts and new ideas or you're just going to start fucking losing and you're not going to understand why. And it's going to be shitty and you're going to question yourself and your confidence is going to waver because your mindset doesn't allow for that flexibility. And your process of decision making does not have the fortitude to accept any kind of pushback. That's why you have to stay flexible. You're going to bend, don't break. And that starts with your mindset. Don't immediately flip off the deep end the moment that your fucking game plan doesn't go well, because guess what? Your game plan isn't going to go well. A lot of your game plans aren't going to fucking go well, because the other people on the other side of the field are doing everything in their power to make sure that that, whatever you have decided that you are going to do, that is not going to be what happens. And your game plan should include making sure that they don't get to do whatever they want to do. And that's what the real mental warfare is, is just whatever your game plan is going to be, I can tell you one thing and one thing only. That one thing is not what is going to happen. I'm going to make sure of that. It might not be what I wanted either, but it's not going to be this. It's going to look more like this or like this. Or if I have my way, it's going to look like this. 
and unfortunately a lot of the times my finger doesn't go that far back but it's going to look like that and that's when it's going to really hurt that's the break don't bend you want your game plan to bend so that it can get back to this at some point but if it doesn't do this then it's going all the way the other way and it's not coming back and you're not earning it back you either bend or you break what is your mindset going to do as soon as someone makes sure that your game plan doesn't go according to plan are you going to break instantly because that's just bad decisions on bad decisions you haven't made any good decisions at any point leading up to the game within the game or probably afterwards either i don't know why you're going to just start making good decisions now i mean maybe a good kick in the teeth is exactly what you needed to start making those good decisions and i hope you recognize it for what it is and i hope you appreciate that uh set of veneers that you're gonna have afterwards because that's what it really is you're gonna get kicked in the teeth if you don't bend if you're not flexible you are going to break it is that simple and if you're not open and if you're not flexible and if you are not willing to bend past comfort if you are not willing to move into a space of uncomfortability you are not going to put yourself in the decision to make real concrete effective decisions that are going to actually manipulate the state of whatever game you're in you gotta have to take losses you gotta take losses denying that is impossibly ignorant there is no way you can sit there and tell me you are only ever going to just win. I mean, you might be, once again, I don't know, you might be an 11-year-old that's never actually been through anything in their lives and they're just getting to a point that they think they can just start saying shit to people. They think they know what words mean. They haven't earned what words actually mean through hard work. And so you don't have to be 11 to do that. There are a lot of people that have gone their entire lives without ever actually earning a single fucking thing. And that's really disappointing. And I hope you are trying desperately to not be one of those people. But for all the people that don't understand what I'm saying, I'm going to go ahead and give those people the benefit of the doubt that they are just too young and inexperienced to understand otherwise. And if you identify with this and you are not 11, there's your wake up call. There it is. Bright and early. Do something about it because you haven't made any good decisions at any point. You really haven't. If it just feels like you're breaking all the time and you're not flexible to what's going on, you can't deal with what is occurring, you have to address all of it all the way, 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 way deep down. I don't know why you feel the need to be that afraid of everything else but it's all mental and you can fix it you can do so much for yourself to prevent that from being the case for you and you're the only one that's going to prevent that recognize it for what it is be better do better there's nothing else you're just wasting your time and everyone else's and you're not actually learning anything about yourself you are still lying to yourself. You got to become flexible, earn it. It's not something that you get to just do. You got to practice it like everything else. Like I will always practice, 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 practice. And it starts with putting yourself in situations where you're not completely comfortable and then doing your best and recognizing it for what it is that your best is just that's what it is today. And you do your best tomorrow, and you do your best the next day, and if you keep doing that, then your best will keep becoming better, and you'll be so impressed with yourself. But it starts with keeping an open mind. Keeping an open mind. Recognizing the actual possibilities for what they truly are. Respect what other people are doing. They're trying hard. Respect yourself for trying hard. Respect, 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 because this shit is not easy. And I tell you, if you find it just so easy, then go do something else. Go find something that's really hard. Go find something challenging. There will be plenty there for you to do for the rest of your life. 
there will be no shortage of extremely challenging things. And then once you just keep doing challenging stuff, believe it or not, eventually you're going to look forward to all the challenges. You're going to look forward to all the new places to start, to all of the new things to be learned about, to all of the new games to be played. Open mind only ever always helps. Keep an open mind. And your decisions will have a brighter hue to them. All of your decisions are going to feel like the more tough, good decisions you make for yourself, the more you're going to feel like you have more good options. There's just more and more is going to become available to you. More fun, more interest, more teamwork will be available. You're going to have more teams to participate on. Everything is going to be more fun. It's just there's so much more to do when you have an open mind and you're not just sitting in your little shitty shit diaper whining about everything all the time. Go do something more. Go do something real. There are so many great people out there that are just doing awesome stuff all the time. Why not go join them? They aren't holding it against you that you don't know what you're doing. They're not going to hold it against you for wanting to try something new. People worth being around will only want to help you become better at whatever you're doing. Go find those people. They're not judging you. They want to be your friend. And they're all over the place. You're lying to yourself if you think that they aren't. I know for a fucking fact that they are. I've seen it my whole life. I've seen it. It's, I can't deny it. This would be just a disservice to everything that I understand. There are great people all over the place that already think this way. Just go join them. They want you to join them. There's no reason not to. Just try something new and keep an open mind. And just do your best. That's all there is. It really is. That is it. Just keep doing your best. There's, there's nothing else to it. Just be flexible. And give people the benefit of the doubt when it comes to everybody has their own little nugget of wisdom to share. Everybody's been through stuff. It's not just they're just an idiot and they only say dumb things. That's extremely close-minded. That's very incorrect. And I would be so much more inclined to say that about someone that thinks that way about other people automatically than anyone else that's just doing their thing. Yeah, that's like the only real way to be that kind of person, to just be an idiot, is to just be like a little shit pants that wants nothing to do with anyone else, that thinks everyone else is just an idiot. That's so ridiculous to think that way. I, I could not. I can't. I appreciate other people and how hard they're trying and the difficulty of what we have found ourselves wrapped up in is just immeasurable. We can't define this level of stress and scrutiny. It has never existed before. You just gotta be good to yourself, you know? Keep an open mind. And recognize things for what they are. But you have to see what those things are for themselves. Allow it, that thing time to prove what it really is. And that's like the key to quality pattern recognition is giving stuff time. Give people time to change. Give yourself time to change. Your mind isn't just going to boom in an instant. I, my mind is now opened and ready to receive. It's going to be a slow blooming. And it's going to take time for all the petals to unfurl. And it's going to take time for you to change your mind over and over and over and over. And it's all the small, all the small ways that we've talked about doing it. You take it each little time. You just hold on to it. You say, why? Why is this running through my head? 
Is this useful? Does this deserve to be filed away in a place that gets saved? Or does this go in the fucking trash? Just keeping an open mind. And that doesn't mean going back to the hula hoop sized, let literally everything in. You still want that tiny little sieve. But keeping an open mind is the sieve being the right size and the right grate and the right fineness of the material like passing through it it has to be a very specific shape that you can evaluate any idea but it is a very effective filter to what's good what's useful what's bad what's not useful and that is for you to determine it doesn't mean that everything gets through all the way through into the filing stage. It means that you don't start with a tiny little fucking pinhole of light, and that's the only illumination that your mind has ever received, is this tiny little pinhole of light where anything can go through that hole if you shove it through the hole hard enough. It's just such a narrow fucking passageway that only certain shitty ideas are going to make it through after a while. It's just random dust particles and shit air and pollution that just gets just the sludge that seeps through that hole. That tiny, tiny little fucking hole. It doesn't serve a real purpose. It's just an open passageway. That doesn't work. You need very specific intentions but you evaluate all of it for yourself. You need that powerful filter. That's what critical thinking does for you. It determines whether or not it passes through or not. But you can't start with this tiny little pinhole that no idea can approach, or you will never actually be evaluating anything, and then your ability to evaluate gets strangled. You don't flex that muscle. It's just black or white, good or bad, yes or no. And that's not how any of this stuff works. You have to be able to read between the lines and really, really, really evaluate something for yourself. And it's practice like anything else. It's always just practice.